Hello again. So today I thought I'd do something a little different. Um, just go through the vinyl playing ritual, because that's what it is. It is a ritual, and I suppose the ritual is slightly different for everybody that plays vinyl, but um, I was always uh, curious as to what other people's rituals were, and some people are very fastidious, and some people are extremely anal. I don't know where I fit in that, probably somewhere in between. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just thought I'd go through my my ritual for, for, for before I play a record. So, because I'm filming this with my phone and therefore I only have one hand, I've already put the record on the platter, but before it would have gone on the platter, in fact, uh, before it would have been played at all, it would have been cleaned on, I'm to remove those sleeves, uh, this is a, a, a smart audio, no it isn't, it's a clear audio matrix, smart matrix. So that would be cleaned on here, um, record goes on the, on, on the mat, uh, fluid is applied, um, and this is basically, a, 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 it's, it's a, a brush that's connected to a vacuum cleaner inside the box, so that sucks up all the fluid. Does a really good job of uh, cleaning uh, cleaning records. I've got two brushes. That's for that's kind of a felt uh, uh, brush, which uh, does kind of light cleaning duties. And here I've got a goat's hair uh, tonar wet goat brush, which um, which 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 for secondhand records is particularly because it delves a little bit cleaner into the grooves. Um, so once the record's been cleaned and and dried, uh, it would then. And obviously I don't do that before every play because that would be a nightmare. So that's done as and when the record's bought, really. Um, and then it's put on the platter and uh, there's a, as you can see, there's a, a, a clamp on the platter here. And um, what I like to do is if you don't tighten the clamp, you'll see, you can see that, that the, the record uh, is actually not secured to the platter. Um, so I give it a little twist until such time as, there you go, you can probably see that it is, it's is—it's—it's now flat against the platter. Um, if it's not against the platter, it's, it's, it's basically, it's probably prone to vibration, to be honest, to the record. So you kind of want to secure it to the platter. Um, and I don't, that's just a steel platter. I don't have a mat uh, to, uh, that goes on the platter between the record and the platter that's just secured directly to the platter so the next thing that i would do is i'd grab one of my little carbon fiber brush cleaners here um, i would turn on the uh, turn on the motor get it spinning and i just give it a very light brush very light brush and gradually just move any dust or fibres to the outside of the record. Turn that off. And the other thing I do, and I never uh, did this until I used to get a really consistent clicking noise. Every time I would clean my records with a, uh, with a, with a brush, I'd get a clicking noise. And it turned out to be anti-static. It turned out to be static, sorry. Um, so I use this, this is, uh, a zero stat, multi zero stat, which this one's lost its click. I think it still works fine, even though it doesn't click. Um, I'll take the top off of my teeth. Hold on. Okay, so the top is off, and you're supposed to use it about I don't know 12 inches above the record. So you just give it one long squeeze and a long let go, one long squeeze and one long squeeze. Now this might look like complete insanity and madness but believe me it works because when you do get a click which is the static discharging from the record and you can hear it on the on uh, through the, the the cartridge that completely eradicates it it's unbelievable actually it's, it's and, and it does a great job of that so whilst they are expensive i think they're about 60 quid those multi uh, zero stats they do do a really good job next thing i would do is use my Onzao Zero Dust, which is uh, basically a stylus cleaner. And let's see if I can do this with one hand. Just take the top off. No, I can't, hold on. 
again, use of teeth. So the top is basically a, a little magnifying glass. So you can actually see, you can, you can check out your, your stylus with this to see how clean it is. So that's great. Um, but there's a, a little pod of gel, uh, which you very, very carefully and lightly, I'll see if I can do this without looking at the camera. You just do that and you'll hear it through the speaker. Yeah, you heard that through the speaker. And that just picks up any, any grime, any dust, any um, detritus that's kind of clinging to uh, the stylus. And it's really, really important to keep that stylus as clean as possible because uh, not only the grooves, you want the grooves obviously clean, but it's really important to keep that stylus as clean as possible. It just means your records will last a hell of a lot longer. And, and also, if, if you've got a load of crap on, on your stylus, you, you will hear it as well. So you won't actually be hearing what's in the groove. So after all that, um, after all that, you can actually get on with the uh, business of playing a record. So everything's primed to go. Everything's primed to go. Let's see if I can do this with a unipivot arm. See if I've got that right. No, nope. that's about right there. And it doesn't normally take quite this long, but it's worthwhile. It's a worthwhile ritual. Just means you can enjoy the music that much better. Your records last longer, your stylus lasts longer, your enjoyment of the music is that much better. Keep everything clean. That's that's the key. Keep everything free of dust. And after playing the record, I should just pop that up. After playing the record, I always keep my records in um, a anti-static sleeve. So I've actually popped one into the yellow, the, the, the inner sleeve that came with the album. So let me see if I can get it out. There we go. So this one's a MoFi. Uh, original master sleeve, rice paper, I think there, and anti-static, uh, an anti-static sleeve which protects the record. And um, I also keep the sleeves of my records uh, protected as well. Uh, just bought a, a load of these. Actually, these are let's see now, Spin Care uh, is the make. Spin Care Clarity, and these are for they're resealable. Uh, and you can, they work on gatefolds as well if you get two sleeves together. And a pack of 50 of those will cost you about, I don't know, 12, 15 quid probably. Um, now they obviously keep your sleeves protected, but these, um, these MoFi uh, Master Sleeves are fantastic. I also use the Nagoka ones, which are kind of that shape, a kind of semi-circular shape, and they're really good as well. Um, so yeah, so that's it, that's the ritual. Seems like a lot of a lot of faffing around and a lot of bother, but when you get used to it, it really doesn't take long. And you know, there's, there's, it's, it's so important to keep your records clean. I wish I had an ultrasonic cleaner because that's the best way of keeping your records absolutely spotless. But they cost a pretty penny. And unfortunately, I just don't have the funds to uh, spend on one of those. But that, uh, that Smart Matrix that I bought about 10 years ago does a fantastic job and uh, is a really worthwhile investment. I think I picked that up for second hand for about 400 quid. And it's one of the best things I've ever bought because you think about what you'd spend 400 quid on on your hi-fi and you will not get an upgrade in sound quality like you will if you use one of these to clean your records. Keep your records clean. Anyway, that's enough from me. Thanks for watching and uh, keep spinning those records.